Hello and welcome to this video. Most engineered structures are made up of many parts. So appropriately defining the interactions between components is critical in accurately predicting the behavior. For the majority of cases, when analyzing them in ANSYS Mechanical, we can use contacts to set up the relationship between the parts. Contact elements transmit forces between parts based on the specific contact behavior, such as bonded, no separation, frictional, frictionless, or rough. However, contact calculations are computationally expensive. So there are situations where we'd like to represent the part interactions in a more efficient manner. For example, assemblies like a suspension system, rear axle, digger arm, include different types of kinematic behavior between parts. We can capture the interactions between the parts with simplified connections like spring, beam connections, and joint without modeling the detailed interaction via contact elements. Using such kinematic constraints between parts is a computationally efficient approach while working with large assemblies. However, the new users may find the behavior of springs, beam connections, and joint confusing at first. Don't worry, in this video, we'll help you to understand the difference and when to use these connections instead of contacts. Ready? Let's go! Springs, beams, and joints help us to incorporate the structural characteristics of a connection without the need to include detailed calculations, thereby providing a balance of engineering accuracy and efficiency. Although these connections provide a simplified method for creating kinematic constraints between parts, it is much more efficient than modeling the detailed parts with contact. In all of these connections, we make use of remote points in mechanical. Essentially, we reduce multiple degree of freedoms of scoped geometry to a single node or remote point that has up to six degree of freedom, three translational and three rotational. We can then join together two remote points with a spring, beam, or joint connection. These connections can either be used to connect two bodies together or to connect a body to ground. We will discuss this in more detail in a later section of this video. But in case of body to ground connection, one remote point is situated on the body whereas the other remote point is grounded. Due to the reduced degree of freedom, these connections offers a simpler but more efficient representation of a connection between two parts. Let's look into each of these connections in detail. Starting with the spring connection, I'm sure you all must have seen a spring since it is one of the most commonly found in mechanical components in many applications. A spring can be defined as an elastic element that stores energy when subjected to a load and regains its original shape when the load is removed. Springs, when used as a connection in ANSYS Mechanical, offers a simplified yet efficient method of modeling a physical spring in a system. Spring connection helps to reduce the pre-processing time and computational cost involved in simulating a 3D model of a spring in an assembly. In ANSYS Mechanical, springs can be defined as longitudinal springs that generate a force which is dependent on linear displacement. One of the important properties of spring is its thickness. The ability of a spring to resist the applied load is defined as the spring stiffness. For longitudinal springs, the stiffness is defined in one direction, namely the longitudinal direction. A spring connection can be used to connect two bodies together or to connect a body to ground. The body to ground type of connection can be used to connect a part with the ground or to connect a part with another part which is not included in the analysis, but still represents the other end of the spring connection. Although spring connections can be used to model an actual helical spring in a system, it can also be used to model the behavior of any component that has stiffness acting predominantly in one direction. For example, if you want to perform a linear stress analysis of a bicycle brake lever without modeling the cable that connects the lever to the brake part, 
the effect of cable can still be accounted for by representing it in a form of spring connection. As an engineer, you would be interested in knowing the elongation or the relative displacement between the two ends of the spring. This can be easily determined using a result called as spring probe. Now, here is a quick tip. Simply drag and drop the spring connection on the results tree. This will automatically add a spring probe result. That's convenient, isn't it? In addition to the spring elongation, you can also get to know the elastic force that is acting along the length of the spring from the same spring probe result. This elastic force is a product of spring stiffness and elongation. The walkthrough session will further help you understand how to create and use the spring connection in ANSYS Mechanical. Let's move on to discuss the next type of connection, the beam connection. The FL Tower, who doesn't know it? It is one of the engineering masterpieces that was built by humans. Now, here's the main question. Have you closely observed how the bars of the towers are connected with each other? You can see these wrappers, which are used to connect the bars. As you can see, there are hundreds and thousands of connections utilized. Not limited to civil engineering structures such as tower or bridge, you can find different types of fasteners that are used in numerous assemblies and machines to hold parts together. If you are trying to analyze such a system which has many fasteners, Modeling each and every fastener as a 3D solid can be a time-consuming task, not only from the geometry and meshing point of view, but also computationally expensive due to the creation of several contacts for all the fasteners. In that case, how can we efficiently analyze such fasteners? The answer to this question is to make use of beam connections. Beam connections in ANSYS Mechanical offers a simplified yet efficient way to represent fasteners. Beam connections use structural beam element that can carry a bending load in addition to shear and actual loads. Similar to a spring connection, beam connections can be used to connect two bodies together or to connect a body to ground. Pretension load, which is used to model a bolt under pretension, can also be applied on beam connections. Identical fasteners in the model can be quickly represented with beam connections using the object generator tool. Similar to springs, beam connections help to reduce the pre-processing time and computational cost involved in simulating 3D models of fasteners in an assembly. The difference here is that a spring has stiffness only along its length, whereas a beam connection offers actual and bending stiffness. For beam connection, one would be interested in knowing the forces and moments generated within the beam. This can be evaluated using beam probe. The drag and drop tip that was shared earlier on adding spring probes is applicable for beam probe as well. The last type of connection we want to discuss is joints. Let's have a look at this robotic arm. The connections between the different parts are designed to behave in desired ways. That is, the movement between the parts are only allowed in certain directions. In certain simulations, engineers may not care about the distortion or stress and strain around these joints, but they may be concerned with capturing the desired kinematic movement. Depending on the nature of the rotational and translational degree of freedoms, ANSYS Mechanical provides different joint types that can be used to represent various kinematic behaviors. For example, for the revolute joint, only the rotational degree of freedoms along this z-axis is free, and all the other doffs are constrained. For a cylindrical joint, only the translational and rotational doff in d directions are free. And for a spherical joint, all rotational doffs are free, but translational doff are constrained. Note that although joints are often used in nonlinear large deflection analysis, they can also be used in linear small deflection analysis too. For the setup of joints, we need to identify the reference side and the mobile side. The joint degree of freedom and measurements are taken from the reference side through a reference coordinate system. Thus, we think of any motion of the joint as measuring the movement of the mobile side with respect to the reference side. For example, looking at this animation of joints, we can easily tell which part is reference and which part is mobile. In ANSYS Mechanical, 
When we scope a geometry part for reference or mobile, a remote point is created to represent the scoped geometry. Similar to spring and beam connections, joints can also be defined as body to body or body to ground. For body to ground, the reference will be the ground side. We must also notice that when we talk about degree of freedoms of joints, they are based on the reference coordinate system. For example, for the ref loop joint, when we say the rotational degree of freedom along the z axis is free, the z axis is not the global z axis, but the z axis in the reference coordinate system. In default, the remote point of the reference side is located at the origin of the reference coordinate system. When defining joints, besides choosing the reference and mobile side, some types of joints may allow for input of joint stiffness. For example, the bushing joint allows user to input a stiffness matrix for different directions independently. Besides stiffness, there are also additional features for dynamic or nonlinear analysis, depending on the joint type. As for output, ANSYS Mechanical can report the forces experienced in the joints along with the relative displacement or relative rotations of the joint. Now, let's use a simple landing gear problem to learn how to define some types of kinematic constraints in a model. The landing gear system is part of a large remote-controlled airplane. Let us assume that we have been given the task of designing and analyzing the landing gear but another team or another company has designed the main body of the remote control airplane. In this simulation, we want to conduct a linear static analysis of the landing gear model subjected to a force from the ground. And our analysis interest is the behavior of the shaft. The shaft is composed of two short shafts and the two shafts can have relative motion along the axis. Between the top shaft and the connector, there's a spring providing stiffness only in the actual direction. For simplicity, we decide to remove the tire parts from the model and apply the reaction force directly on the axle. Since the model and the forces are symmetric, we can just simulate half of the model. Using the current geometry, let's open ANSYS Mechanical to define the model. First of all, let's check the unit system. Here we're using metric millimeter. For materials, we'll use aluminum for all the components. Now, let's define the symmetric plan of the model. Right mouse click on model from tree outline. Insert symmetry, then insert symmetry region. Select all the exposed surface on the XY plan and set the symmetry normal to be Z axis. Next, let's navigate to the connection branch in the tree outline, and you will find that ANSYS Mechanical has automatically created several bonded contacts for surface that are close to each other. We will leave them as they are for now. What we need to do next is to create a spring connection. We can right mouse click on connection, click on insert, then click on spring. Scroll down in the details, you will see that in default, it's a body to body spring, which is just what we want. One end of this spring is the top surface of the connector. Let's scope it correctly. And the other end of the spring is the bottom surface of the top shaft. Let's scope to this surface too. Now, what's missing is the longitudinal stiffness of spring. In this case, the given stiffness is 6,000 Newton per millimeter. As a static analysis doesn't consider velocities or dampings, we can leave the longitudinal damping at zero. With the spring connection created, we know that the two shafts are expected to have relative movements along the longitudinal axis. Therefore, we should not have bonded contact between the two parts. Let's find the corresponding bonded contact. Here, we change the contact type to be no separation. This means that the two surfaces can have relative movement but cannot separate from each other, which applies to our case. Now, let's consider the boundary conditions of this problem. We already know that the axle will be subjected to force from the ground, but how about the top of the landing gear? 
In reality, he's attached to the main body of the remote control airplane, so it should not be a fixed support. For such a situation, we can use a body to ground bushing joint to represent the boundary condition. The movement of the plate is controlled by the stiffness of the bushing joint. Let's right mouse click on the connections again, then insert joint. You will see that the default joint type is a fixed joint. Click on the little triangle on the right, and it will show all the available joint types. Here, let's click on bushing. Scroll down a little bit, and the yellow highlighted areas indicate that we're missing the definition for reference and mobile size. In this case, the reference will be the ground, so we need to first to change the connection part to be body to ground. Then we'll see that the only part that needs to be defined is the mobile side. Let's scope the top surface of the landing gear for the mobile side. On the left side of the geometry window, it lists the free degree of freedoms for any joint type you defined. For bushing joint, you can see that all the six degree of freedoms are free, so nothing is constrained. However, the degree of freedom should not be free to move without resistance. Click on Worksheet tab on the right side of the Geometry tab. It shows the spreadsheet to define the stiffness matrix and damping matrix for the six degree of freedoms of the bushing joint. Let's fill in the stiffness value here. You will notice that stiffness values are only given for the diagonal entries for this case. This means that the deformation of the six joint degree of freedoms are not coupled. For example, the force in x direction is only dependent on the deformation in x direction, but not deformation from y direction or any other directions. Since this is a static analysis, we don't consider any damping for this bushing joint, so we can leave the damping matrix blank. The bushing joint generates a reaction force accordingly when there is any movement of the top surface of the landing gear. Body to ground bushing is especially useful in situations where your design is connecting with someone else, for example, a vendor's or customer's model. They just need to give you six stiffness values, but not the detailed design to avoid intellectual property problems or leaking of sensitive information. You can represent a more accurate analysis using body to ground bushing as a boundary condition compared with a fixed support if the attachment point is not actually rigid but has some flexibility such as in our example. Set the global mesh size of 5 mm and generate mesh. Now, right mouse click on the static structural branch on the tree outline, then click on insert, and let's add a force on the axle. We'll scope it to the end area of the axle. Change the deformation from vector to component then add 100 Newton in the X direction and 500 Newton in the Y direction. Under the solution, let's insert a total deformation and an equivalent stress result. We're ready to solve now. Now the problem is solved, we can review the equivalent stress control plot and deformation animation here. As you can see, the amount of deformation is not very small, so this model may be a candidate for nonlinear large deformation analysis. Now, let's insert another deformation result and scope the deformation to the top plate of the model. Right mouse click to evaluate the results, you'll see that, as expected, the deformation of the top surface is not zero. Let's also check the reaction force on the bushing joint. From the tree outline, we can drag the bushing joint and drop it on solution, then evaluate the results. We can see that there are reaction forces in the x and z directions. Note that these forces are in the joint reference coordinate system, and the values balance with the applied force on the axle in the global x and y directions. To check the force in the spring, we can also drag the spring and drop it on solution. As expected, the force in the spring is the same as the applied force on the axial in the global y direction. This concludes the workshop demo. In this video, we discussed three types of kinematic constraints that we can use to model connections when detailed modeling is not necessary. They are spring, beam, and joint connections. Spring connections represent parts whose stiffness predominantly acts along the length 
such as helical springs. The beam connections are often used to represent fasteners or other parts with axial and bending stiffness. Pretension loads can also be applied to a beam connection. The joint connections are used to define kinematic constraints between parts, and there are a variety of joint types for different purposes. In all of these connections, the degree of freedoms at the connection location are reduced by using one or two remote points with up to six degree of freedom each, which we then connect via a spring, beam, or joint. These connections need significantly less computing effort than contact, but it simplifies the representation of the connection. Contact, on the other hand, is a comprehensive simulation with no simplification or limitations on degree of freedom. Contact is recommended when the interaction between the two parts is unknown in advance, or when modeling the interaction is of primary importance. Note that the computational cost and simulation complexity for contacts are much higher than connections. I hope this video will help you in creating different kinematic constraints between parts and when to use them in ANSYS Mechanical. Don't forget to visit courses.ansys.com to discover more useful courses. Thank you.